Hi, this is, hello. This is going to be a quick introduction to something we already covered in class, how to use um, code blocks. Assuming you installed it already and you double clicked or clicked on the um, code blocks icon, this thing will appear. And you have choices. We'll, um, create a new project, open an existing project, tip of the day, always fun. You can look to all the tips. You could say, don't show me again, but sometimes tips can be fun. There are code block forums on the internet, reporting bugs. But let's take a look at creating a new project. Now, you might, I didn't cover this in class, but if you look at the top, you'll see many menu choices. We don't need to, do, to use most of these things here. They're even dockable. You can pull them around and get rid of them if you don't want them. If I don't know what they are, and you can always bring them back later on. All right, or I could leave them there. Whatever, there is others here. I can move these things around. I can work with it over here. If I don't know what debugging is, I can get rid of it. Browser, uh, browse track. Don't know what it is. I can get rid of. Or I could leave good enough alone, right? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. All right, so I'm going to create a new project. I'll pretend I never touched that stuff. Now, when I create a new project, this window pops up. There are templates. Most of all the um, integrated development environments do this for you. It gives you many choices. If you're working with an Arduino system, there's an Arduino project. Oh, look, Fortran, if you're working for NASA. Fortran application, great. We want to create an application, but not the Fortran language. We'd like to use C++. Well, here I have the console application, and that's what we're going to always select. Um, sometimes it's called a shell. That's why you see a C shell there. It's a shell or a terminal if you're working in Mac or Unix. Well, I click on Go. It'll ask me, hey, it's a console application. That's what we want. You're ready to proceed. Click Next. We could skip this step. I'll leave it. Next. Now, in this our system, we only have two choices, C or C++. We want C++. Next. Next, we have to give our project a name. Well, I'll call this Hello World 2, because in class, I think I created a Hello World number one already. So I'll call this one Hello World 2. Next, where do I want the file to go? Click on these dots, and uh, it'll bring this thing up. And you can click wherever you want it to go. I think I picked on my computer documents. Uh, C++ code looks good. Um, looks like a good spot. So I'll click yes right there. This is my, the code blocks project file. It is not the program that you and I are typing. It is for this whole integrated development environment, not for us. That's where it keeps track of where all the windows are, where the files are, what's going on. And leave everything else alone. Next. Now it's, it's these are the possible compilers it can work with, but this system only has, has two compilers on it. I have VC++, 2020 or something like that. I don't have these and it didn't detect it. So I am going to ignore all the rest of them and just the GNU C++ compiler. That's what GCC really means. And don't touch anything here for now. Why not? Why just, just leave it? it? Makes life easier. And voila, I've now been given a dummy program, but where is it? If you look carefully at the screen, there's something called management. Notice I clicked on, I can click on it 
And as I move it around, a ghost will appear. I don't know if you can see the ghost with the camera, but a thin blue shadow appears. And that's a docking area. I let go and it docks there. I can have it dock at the top. Move it over to the other side. I can have it docking on the right. And I can move my picture around apparently. I'll shrink it and get me out of the way. Now, if you have two monitors, you could take this thing and move it off to the side somewhere. But I'm going to leave it right here. I like it over there. There's the name of my project, Hello World 2. Here is, when I click on Sources, my source file, main.cpp. Double click on it, and here it is. We don't need these spaces here, but here is the input output library. This saves me the trouble, as we talked about, of typing this in. Oh my goodness, look at this. This is sort of an intelligence, uh, IntelliSense feature. It's guessing what the next thing could possibly be. Look at all these things. Who knows what they all are? I don't. There's a lot of these different functions. There's only one I want. It's the one called Cout. And it actually is there. There it is. Output stream. If I double click on it, it will finish the word for me. And this says, send to the output. This output is standard output, which is the monitor. Send to it the string, double quotes, means you can type anything you want in ASCII. Anything. And I typed in for us Mac 102. Hello, Mac 102 world. End of the string. Send that to the screen our monitor and right behind it then send the code to skip a line that's all that means semicolon it's like the end of a statement or the end of a sentence and all our programs require this at the end the last two lines return zero and a brace and it, it begins with this i want it to run well here is the run button, just like on a, a VHS player, a recorder, uh, an MP3 player, MP4. It means run. It's an old symbol. And the gear means to build the program. What's the build mean? It means take this whole thing and convert it into a binary code that my operating system can give to the CPU and the CPU will run it. So I'll say build. And it built it, but we didn't see anything. There were no errors. So I'll say run it. So it ran and it says, hello world. It's so tiny. What you can do, at least in Windows, you can right click in the corner, move down to properties, you can pick a larger layout if you want. Change the width and size of this box. Yeah, I'll say I like the lotch a little bigger. So I'm gonna put it, and I wanna move it here. I'll go back there, properties, layout. It says, let the system position it. No, 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 uncheck that box. Then fonts, I'm gonna to go to something larger. So now every time I run the program, it will appear right here. Press any key to continue. Done. I'm gonna run it again now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna press that run button. And notice it appears in the same spot. And of course, this is an editor. If there's a typo, say right here, I have to build it, this red button dot, or a box is telling me there's a mistake there. Something happened. And that's called debugging. I look at it and say, ah, there's my typo. Build it again. Oops, I accidentally put a breakpoint in here. A breakpoint 
if you right click on a blank area, it'll have the system stop at that point in your program. People use that to debug their system. Instead of letting it run really, really fast, computers are fast, remember, I can stop it somewhere, freeze right here, and I will take a look at the program. There it is, running. Now, instead of building it and running it in two clicks, build, run, you can build and run with one click right here. All right, I hope that um, answered some of your questions on code blocks.